welcome to Good Luck High Five, episode 332. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you. If you play Magic the Gathering, whether you're sitting at home, jamming arena, as I often do, you're heading out to your FNM or even to a Magic Fest to play in a GP. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's show, we are talking Modern Horizons and getting you ready for your Modern Horizons pre-release. That's right. There are so many rules. There are so many mechanics. There are so many interactions. And we're going to get you up to speed so that you know what to do. Yeah, this set is complicated times a thousand. Yes. If you thought War of the Spark was bad, oh boy, buckle up. Or good. Or good. Yeah, just a lot of stuff is going on is what I'm saying. And uh, to make sure that you won't feel confused when you're playing your pre-release or a sealed event or on Magic Online, we've brought in Judge Rob to help us out this episode. Yes. Who better to ask than a judge? That's right. And he's got a whole wealth of Magic knowledge from years and years of playing the game and being a judge. So we're going to help you not stumble while playing War of the Spark and uh, War of the Spark. <laughs> modern Horizons. Modern Horizons. Plus, if you're going to end up putting these cards in your modern decks or whatever or playing against them, yep. you're going to want to know what they do. So uh, we're going to help you out with some of the trickier stuff. And Rob's here to help us. Spicy and but exciting. Before we do any of that, a uh, big thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. Yes, if you are a supporter of the show, so many thanks to you. And if you have as little as five dollars a month, a buck twenty-five a week, cents per day to throw our way to help keep bringing these shows to the airwaves, we would so appreciate it. Yeah, if this show if, or the upkeep or any yes. of our videos, honestly, our board game YouTube channel, anything, is something that you would feel sad. Quick, check in with yourself. Would you feel sad if we were gone forever? <laughs> if the answer is yes, then you, consider should, you should probably be a patron. <laughs> yes. Consider contributing. Contributing. Sure. Contributing, whatever. You know. Anyways, <laughs> thank you also to our wonderful sponsor, Card Kingdom, cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Fantastic place for all of your gaming needs from booster boxes to boosters to singles for these sweet new modern decks. If oh, you want yeah. some of these hot cards for your modern deck, Hop on over there because they'll get you them faster than anyone else. And you can say, I'd like a good luck high five sticker or token in your order. And mm-hmm. they will put them in your order for free. And they're running a special Modern Horizons deal right now where you get some stickers. Yes. Some popular modern archetype stickers along with your order if you order before a certain date. Details, of course, cardkino.com slash GLHF. And now to the show. <laughs> All right, everybody, we've got Judge Rob here, who's been reading uh, The Red Fern. I was going to say as the red fern grows, but... hi. Hi. Where Where the red red fern grows. grows. That's a classic. Yes, it's one of my favorite books from my childhood. Uh, It was my favorite book for a long time. Um, Is it one of the ones that's sad? I feel like it is. (laughs) I think it is. From what I remember. I think it is. I think I remember, but I I will lend you this book, and you will get very, very sad. (laughs) Do you like dogs? And that's a yes. promise. Okay, you will be very, very sad. There no. are heroic dogs. No. There are heroic dogs, and I won't spoil the I plot. Know, I know in this case what quote-unquote heroic dogs Let's means. Let's make a list of all the saddest childhood books that involve dogs. Oh. Shiloh. <laughs> Uh, old Yeller. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, why do yep. they do that to kids? That's messed up. I don't know. Uh, well, Rob, you're here to tell us all about yes, Modern Horizons. I am. But um, you usually have a PSA at the I top do. for us. Uh, so I, my PSA for this one is about asking questions and answering questions. When you're at a pre-release or any other regular event at your local store, uh, ask questions. If you don't know what a card does, if your opponent plays a foreign card, if your opponent just plays a card that you can't read from across the table, ask. Don't feel bad about it. Uh, there are like thirty thousand magic cards, right? Uh, I don't know them all. I ask for I ask for things at every pre-release. I ask to see people's cards when I take judge calls all the time. Uh, I look them up. And so asking, good. It's even better answering. Help your opponent out. Uh, you're secretly playing a collaborative game at regular rules enforcement. I've talked about this before. People are going to ask you questions about your cards. Show them the card. Try to explain some stuff. If they ask you a question that you don't know the answer to, that's what judges are for. That's We, we want to help you. We want to make, make your tournaments better, more fun, and we like answering questions. So feel that's free to ask job. us. Yeah, that's our yeah. job. And uh, like, if you've ever interacted with a judge, you know that we... we get really excited about really dumb things because we're, we're really excited about uh, rules that have never come up before. The set has a couple of those. <laughs> Uh, the, the most exciting card in the set only has two words of real rules text in it. Uh, Whoa, what are you talking about? Uh, retrace, 
Oh, Cascade. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. got it. Everything else is reminder text. They could print just those two words in the text box. Yeah. And it would it would function the same as with all the reminder text. It's really exciting because it's got a lot of rules packed into two words. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and don't feel bad if you ask about those bunch of rules that are packed into two words. I've got a couple things here that I want to talk about that don't have reminder text uh, on mythics. So if you run into these mythics, you'll want to know. And so feel free to ask. So, uh, Rob, one of the ones that you have listed here, um, we're going to start off with returning mechanics. Yes. So there are a lot. This one I had trouble with on a yes. show, which is why I'm mentioning <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm, I want to talk about returning symbols, Okay. first of all. Uh, there's two symbols that you probably, if you have not been playing Magic since 2008, you probably haven't seen them on cards. Um, the first one, the weird one, it's on one card in the set, is the untap symbol. Weird. It's yeah. so weird looking. Yes. So weird. It's, it's reverse tap in every way. It's it's white on black instead of black on gray, and <laughs> it's it's it shows you untapping the card instead of tapping it. Um, it it literally is the reverse of the tap symbol. The thing has to be tapped for you to spend this cost. You spend the cost by untapping it, which is <laughs> okay. backwards of what you normally do. Yeah. And like the tap symbol, it can't be used if you have summoning sickness. Uh, which you think wouldn't okay. come up, but it can come up in this set. So um, Urza, <laughs> I wouldn't have even yeah, thought about that. Right. Nope. Uh, so um, Urza, uh, Grand High, Ar Urza, Urza Lord High Artificer. Artificer. Yeah, Urza Lord High Artificer has the ability to tap an untapped artifact you control. That's right. To, mm -hmm. add, um, to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Or maybe it's just a blue mana. I think he it's has just a, a blue. But he lets, you, he lets you tap a thing. He doesn't use the tap symbol, so you can use it when you have summoning sickness. Uh, but the one creature with the, with the untap symbol, Farmstead Gleaner, it's so a three cost artifact creature scarecrow. It's a two two. Uh, Farmstead Gleaner doesn't untap during your untap step. Uh, two untap <coughs> to put a plus one plus one counter on Farmstead Gleaner. And then it helpfully gives you the reminder text that untap is the untap symbol, which <laughs> doesn't actually tell you how it works. It just. Uh, you can untap this sometime. I'm so um, excited. To I'm this. just going to read this flavor text real oh, quick. Yes. It's very creepy. When it finishes the harvest, you'll have nowhere to hide. Yeah, that's terrifying. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I just was going to say, I'm Great. so excited to put this in my Great. scarecrow <laughs> tribal yeah. deck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you Which I could make with all these changelings, but also it was a thing. Like, I want to say that yeah. Kenji made a scare had a scarecrow deck. Oh, because yeah. he had the painter servant yeah, scarecrow painter and deck. Yeah, painter servant combo. Yeah, yeah, painter servant combo. But there's like, so Reaper King is is a card. He's Lord of Scarecrows, and he says your scarecrows get plus one, plus one. And when he plays Scarecrow, destroy a permanent. All right. Uh, wow. That like, seems good. He makes your scarecrows reap permanent. All right. So, New modern deck. Uh, Hello. Yeah. We found uh, it here uh, first. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a commander. He's oh. legendary, and he's all five colors, and he's a oh. fun card. Oh. Um, but uh, so Farmstead Gleaner has this on tap symbol. If you have Urza out, you play Farmstead Gleaner, you tap it to add blue. Uh, you can't then untap him on the same turn or until the next time you have started a turn with Farmstead Gleaner. Uh, because he has the untap symbol, and that behaves like the tap symbol, and you can't use it right away. That is uh, that's great bizarre. to know. Yeah, yes. I, uh, very it's, good. Th this card is very strange. Uh, that is the theme of this set. If you haven't been playing since, like I mentioned, about 2008, uh, there was a set called Future Sight. Uh, time Spiral Block existed. It was, it was really strongly themed. I think it's the best themed block of all time. Time Spiral was the past. Planar Chaos was the present. It was alternate presence. And Future Sight was the future. And to have things from the future, they made like thirty really bizarre it, uh, mechanics. It, it, so there were there were like thirty keywords that only appeared on one or two cards a piece. Delve was one of them. Yeah, Delve was Delve was one of them. Um, they they hinted at tons of future things. They put partial cycles in the set that each like they had a cycle of rare lands where each one was entirely different from the others. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so we're fulfilling one of those well, sort of fulfilling one of those cycles right now. Uh, Horizon Canopy, it's from Future Sight. Um, if you see a weird oddball card that nothing else is like, it probably came from Future Sight. Uh, <laughs> cool. they, they also had what they called Chinese menu cards. Because when you look at a Chinese restaurant menu, you're like, I pick one of these and one of these. Yeah. And so that they would do that. When I talk about the Retrace Cascade card, that's a, that's a callback to Future Sight. There's a card, Icker Slick, that has cycling and madness in Future Sight. Wow. And so they, they got to do that again. They're like, we're going to put mechanics that have never been on cards together together, which is amazing. Very complicated and weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is the most complicated set since Future Sight. It, it is a love letter to people like me who have been playing for forever. And uh, if you get overwhelmed, that's fine. Everybody is going to get overwhelmed by I this I already set. know that yeah. I yes. will. <laughs> and that's, that's part of the point. Part of the point is to be 
it, they want magic to be experience. Be experiential. overwhelmed by magic. Right. Well, no, like yeah. it, like they want Innistrad to be scary. They want this place to be confusing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. They want weird stuff that's never happened before to happen. Right. Have, yeah. have you ever tried to read a James Joyce novel? No. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Unfortunately. I, right. Uh, it, it, I... Every time I try to read a James Joyce novel, I go, he is really smart and I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, and I took a class that was just about James Joyce. It, Most of the class was reading Ulysses. Ooh. Oh, and I, you know what? At the end of it, I didn't feel like I had had a fulfilling experience. I that thought I you were going to say, part. I didn't feel like <laughs> I even read it. <laughs> well, no, no. Also that, yeah, well, I didn't. You, you probably read it two or three times. <laughs> yes, I spent something like four months reading Ulysses. And at yes. the end of it, I, I don't think I read it. <laughs> I, and, uh, I am not trying to insult James Joyce here. James Joyce is I a wonderful am. <laughs> Okay, fair. Portrait of an artist as a young man is actually. That like, part is good. That yeah, one is good. That, yeah. that's, that, that one's like for a James Joyce novel, very accessible. Yes. Uh, but he's Double very Dublin is actually pretty good. Yeah. Like that's his short story collection. Right. Uh, but uh, but point being is James Joyce is writing on some other level up here and you'll get glimpses. And that's where like, modern horizon is. Right. You, you know. get glimpses like the sun through cloud of some piece of clarity for just a moment. And that's that's also the set. So great. Uh, yeah. And, now, now to move on to my second item on my yes. talk great, about list. Great, great. Uh, the second symbol, the snowman symbol. Yay! Yeah, it looks kind of like this thing on my on my shirt. Oh, it um, does. Judge yeah. of the North. Um, and <laughs> so the snowman symbol is is weird. Uh, Ice side golem costs a snowflake, <laughs> <laughs> and it's a snow artifact creature golem. This is definitely Frosty the Snowman. Oh, uh, great! Uh, he has he's much more terrifying yes. than I thought he would be. He's like the he's like the. I don't see any corn cob pipe up. or a hat yeah. or two eyes made out of coal. I I just see hands made of ice ready to tear me apart. I, I actually yep. just want a promotional foil of like a frosty stuff oh, snowman of this yeah. car. You can get an altar. <laughs> yeah, if FNM foils still existed as FNM foils, that'd be a hilarious and terrible FNM foil. <laughs> uh, but um, he says in his text box, snow can be paid with one mana from a snow permanent. Um, you can see he's a snow permanent. Um, so snow covered lands like snow covered mountain uh, make regular red mana and they can use that. You can use that to spend on normal red or generic costs. And then also snow, which is a generic mana that isn't a number. It's a snowflake symbol instead <laughs> uh, because it's generic mana cost. You can spend any type of mana, um, any of the any of the five colors or uh, or colorless uh, to. Yeah. It, it, and but because it's not a colored symbol, um, it doesn't get reduced by colored symbols. It doesn't talk about colored symbols because it doesn't have a number and it. it doesn't get reduced by things that reduce numbers. Wait, either. did you just say snow mana can be used to pay color colorless? It, it, so something from a snow permanent. You can't ever make snow mana. Snow is a cost only. Okay. So like if I wanted to cast yeah. like something with the, with a colorless symbol. Yeah, it's fine. If you have Boreal Druid from it, that taps for, for one mana, you'll never see something make snow mana. You have to look at what it came from. It's it's mana that cares about w what produced it. Weird. Um, so it, it's like wastes in that kind of. Uh, no 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 waste waste is actually ha colorless mana that came from something that makes colorless things that make colorless sources now have the color of the symbol on them right. Yeah. Uh, this is a generic mana symbol like when you see a one. But it's a generic snow. Yeah, it's a generic mana that had to come from something that was a snow permanent. Because it's not a number. Things that reduce numbers <laughs> don't reduce Mar it. Maria's brain is. <laughs> I'm right. sorry. I'm still over here wondering if I can put snow mana in my colorless Eldrazi deck. No. It will not be able no, to cast No, it is me. not the same well, thing. Well, okay. You okay. cannot cost, cast a Thought Knot Seer by tapping That's a what Snow I'm asking. Island. Okay, got yes. it. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Snow Islands make blue. They, they <sighs> make blue. There. You can spend any color or colorless mana that came from a snow permanent to, to pay for a snow symbol. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That that's the it like it starts to get more weird when you yeah. think about it. Um, <coughs> the and all the cards in this set that cost snow mana remind you that you need mana from snow permanents to cast them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now here's the kicker: uh, snow things are cheap. This is a two-two for one mana, which pretty is pretty good. good. Uh, but you because you need snow mana for them, you need to have snow lands generally. That's the default way to make them. You don't just get to add snow lands to your limited deck. If you are drafting, you have to draft the snow lands that are in the packs. When you are drafting or playing sealed, you have to take those out and you have to you have to keep track of them as being part of your pool or as part of your draft. If you're drafting Modern Horizons, the snow lands fill up the basic land slots, keep them in the booster pack because people need to draft them. 
like um, wastes yes. were. Exactly like wastes. Wow, were. I need um, to I need to do this. I need to make a yes. snow deck. Yeah, that it, sounds fun. Uh, it it's fun. It wasn't very powerful before. Yeah, I don't know if there'll be a good um, payoff or not. The, the the payoff they made some really powerful payoffs in limited before. Um, and some of the payoffs like you do get two twos yeah, on the first turn, which in limited I I I play that card. Um, but I I mean I wouldn't play it all the time. But the format's yeah. super fast. I I would love it. And if the format's super slow, it gets outclassed. But the the thing is, you must draft them. You can't just go to the land station and find a random snow mountain and put it in your library. You can only put the five basic lands. Uh, mountain, plains, island, swamp, and forest from the land station in your Got library. Got it. Very uh, cool. Well, so, I'm excited about snow, but also waiting to see if it'll be worth it. In limited, in limited it'll be a reasonable This archetype. is just my life that we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting to see if it'll this be worth it. This is what everyone living in Minnesota <laughs> thinks every winter. Is the snow worth yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what I normally do is I go through returning mechanics entirely. I want to talk about the symbols because the symbols are weird. And if yeah. you haven't seen them, you will get lost. Um, but what I want to do is I want to talk about the rules in general and use Modern Horizons to illustrate them. Okay. Uh, because learning like why things do what they do uh, will help you in more c- circumstances than just saying this card works this way. That card works that way. There's 260 cards in the set, or 269, whatever the normal, whatever the set size is, and they're all they're all weird and full of text that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, it, but uh, what I want to talk about is the way that they, the the thing that draws them all together, which is they speak a different language than what normal people speak. Uh, Magic the Gathering cards aren't written in English. They're written in magic. Correct. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you look at it, there's special words with special meanings like like target or upkeep or tap. draw. Yeah, tap. They, they have special meanings. Yep. Uh, there There's words that only exist in magic like crunch. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I was using that word for years. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And then magic, magic adapted it because yeah. it mm-hmm. does take some English words and then it gives them its own special meaning. Uh, it's it's a like it's like a technical language. It's an adjacent language to English. Wrangler also wasn't a word. Yeah, <laughs> until Magic used it. You know, it. Wrangler jeans came out after Cran- after Crunch Wrangler. It, Crunch Wrangler. I just called it Crunch Wrangler, and I don't know which is worse. <laughs> Crunch. Hey, you want some Crunch dressing? <laughs> yeah, uh, I do. Anyway, Crunchy that- Ranch. Mmm. <laughs> like. It's got put, crunchy chunks in it. Yeah. Like what are put, they? Nobody knows. Like put Captain Crunch in your... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 Well, that probably wouldn't work. The oil in the Captain Crunch would break up. Oh, oh. sick. It would turn into like a slime. No. He did like, not need to go this deep. <laughs> <laughs> but, it would turn into a slime. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I want to teach you some of the some of the, yeah. the language of magic. Okay. This is how I teach judges as well is uh, rewire your brain to think about the, these words as having their own special meanings. And then rewire the way that you think about cards because they use their own a, a common set of syntax. Um, magic templating is a skill. Uh, the, the templating is the the standard set of words and ways that they write out text. And if you go read Oracle updates because you're a nerd like me, you'll see oh we updated this kind of template and we went back and rewrote these 23 cards that used it in the past. It'll be like that makes it more clear. That's fantastic. And everybody's like. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to talk about modes to start uh, to start off. Um, some cards, like Kaya's Guile, have a weird text box. It has a bunch of bullet points in it. Um, so Kaya's Guile is an instant cost black, white, one. Uh, it says choose two. First bullet point. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Second bullet point. Exile all cards from each opponent's graveyard. Third bullet point. Create a one, one, white, and black spirit creature token with flying. Fourth bullet point. You gain four life. Uh, then it has Entwine, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so Kaya's Guile has these modes. Uh, anything with modes, there's a bunch in this set that are spells. There's uh, there's triggered modes. There's activated ability modes. Uh, they all behave the same in that you choose the modes at the time it goes in the stack before you pick any targets. Um, the first thing that you do is pick which modes you're going to be doing with the spell. They all say how many you choose and in what way you choose them. Um, on Kaya's Guile, you choose two of these modes. And then it has this entwine ability, entwine three, uh, so three generic mana. Uh, then you choose all these modes if you pay the entwine cost, Jeez. which which is pretty great. Yeah. Um, on on modal spells or on any spells in the set, read the whole spell. 
uh, make when you're looking at an instant, don't just start reading it and say, this is going to deal two damage and then we're done. Uh, because it might end up dealing four damage under some circumstances. Or like Kaya's Guile, Guile, the whole card changes when you get to the entwine. Like, they, I read it, and I, it was like, all right, I can choose two of these things. Let's I can do like two. exile a graveyard, I can make a spirit, or, or I, can get, I can get all of them. <laughs> yes, I, I want that one. Um, so make sure to read through the things and know what all your different modal options are. Uh, when you choose modes for a thing, if you're choosing multiple modes, they happen in the order listed on the card. So on Kaya's Guile here, it's really neat. Um, you choose each opponent sacrifices a creature, oh, and, and then you, you can yeah, exile and you it. choose exile cards from each opponent's graveyard. You, they'll do the steps in order, so they'll sacrifice a creature, and then you'll exile all the cards from each opponent's graveyard. So they'll exile the thing that just got sacrificed. It did. It still went to the graveyard, so it'll trigger dies triggers, but it'll it'll be gone before any of those triggers get the chance to do anything. Um, if it has an ability that like returns itself to their hand when it dies, or it's one of the gods, the gods you know go to the graveyard then get exiled right away, and it's a different god over there in exile, and so it doesn't get put back into the library. Nice. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. It's oh. only if it goes from the battlefield to exile or the battlefield to the graveyard. Correct. I if see. it goes yeah. battlefield, okay. graveyard, exile, it yes. doesn't know. Yeah, exactly. It got <laughs> wow. lost. Every time something moves zones, it's a new object. Okay. It's like, where am I? <laughs> cool. Yep. Um, so the next thing after you pick modes on a spell is the word target. Target is a super special word in magic. And also a store. It's true. It's a su super special store in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> and nowhere else in the world. Nowhere else. <laughs> Sorry, us Minnesotans love our target. Well, it's, it's super special in the U.S. They tried to go to Canada and they failed. Yeah, that is true. Um, Canada was like, no, they're good. It wasn't Canada's fault. Target was incompetent about their move to Canada. Ooh, but that's for another podcast. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, hot takes. Uh, call, call, about call, three years call, ago. Call yeah. Hot takes about Target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> targeting. Uh, the first thing that you do if something targets is pick a target. Um, so I'm going to talk about Cabal Therapist. Um, I also have to talk about him later about something about triggers. But Love has, ahead, man. Yeah, he has a ton of words. Uh, you choose targets immediately, no matter where they are grammatically in a sentence. So Cabal Therapist here, he's a 1-1 one -one for single black with menace. He's a horror. We don't care about all that. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may sacrifice a creature. That's a triggered ability. Then he is a, that trigger says, when you do, uh, makes a second trigger, choose a non-land card name. Then target player reveals their hand and discards all cards with that name. You pick a target, a target player at, when the second trigger goes in the stack right away. You target them or you target you, or if you're in a multiplayer game, you pick which of your, which of your frenemies you want to target. Um, and so you, you target that person, and that's the first thing that you do. Then the ability is going to resolve, and you make other choices. Uh, targets for triggers get picked, and triggers don't do anything else until they resolve. Uh, so for Cabal Therapist, his, his second trigger triggers targets. You can target yourself with it, uh, which is actually relevant. Cabal therapying yourself is a thing that you would sometimes do uh, because you want to discard a stink we dimp so you can dredge it hmm. okay. or whatever. Uh, it, but they don't get to know the rest of it until the spell resolves. The target's chosen up front. Everything else is chosen during resolution for Cabal Therapist here. Okay. Yeah. And so targeting is very important. And there will be cards that have a bunch of words and then a target buried down here and some other words. Know that that target is the thing that's chosen first. Uh, targeting also determines when stuff fails to resolve. If something has multiple targets, uh, it, if all the targets go away, it fails to resolve. If it is one target and that target goes away, it fails to resolve. Uh, it's Kaya's, Kaya's Guile up there has yep. no targets. You can gain hex proof, and it won't get countered because it doesn't target anybody. It says each opponent every time. Gross. Yeah, Kaya's Guile doesn't mess around. Kaya, Kaya has no truck with yeah, hex proof so anywhere. No. It doesn't care about my ley line of sanctity, is what you're Correct. telling me. Correct. Uh, doesn't care about <sighs> Teo the Shield Mage. I hate you, Kaya's Guile. I yeah. hate you. <laughs> I also love that Kaya's Guile is apparently just leaping in ghost form out of a wall. Oh yeah. yeah. No, she has no guile. She, exactly. Like, she's, it's just like I'm here. <laughs> yep. Surprise. Uh, I can walk through walls. I leapt out of this wall at you. Yep. Um. So, I uh, the the thing with modes and targets is you pick modes. You ch pick which one or two of those bullet points you're doing first, and then you pick all the targets for all those modes up front immediately. Uh, then it goes in the stack, and your opponent's going to get the chance to respond to it. Um, but before it goes in the stack, we have one more thing, which is figuring out how to actually pay for this spell. I know. Tell me about it. Uh, it's, 
it's just as hard as doing your taxes and figuring out how to pay for your taxes. <laughs> not going to lie. Uh, now so, I'm breaking out in high. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it's, it's easier than you think, though. Um, and it's, it's really easy to figure out. You take the mana cost of a spell, the stuff that's in the upper right, uh, then you add cost increasers, then you take away cost reducers, and then you check if Trinisphere's in the battlefield. <laughs> so this little equation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, yep. It's, it's super straightforward. Um, base stuff, plus, then minus, then check for Trinisphere. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, I love I, it. Because Trinisphere's a weird card, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but uh, So when I talk about spells here, abilities work the same way. Anytime that I talk about spells, I mean spells, I mean activated abilities, and I mean triggered abilities, but triggered abilities don't have costs, so we can ignore this for triggers. But when we talk about modes, we talk about targets, they, they all behave exactly the same. Uh, so the it, once you've figured out that cost, you then have some options to pay for it, and we'll, we'll talk about paying for that spell. Uh, but let's, let's talk about these different things, and let's go backwards. Uh, so cost reducers look like Morophon the Boundless, uh, the Mega Moose. I love him. He's so good. Yeah. Uh, he's a seven cost, uh, legendary shapeshifter cost, uh, for a 6-6. Six, six. He has Changeling. Uh, so how Changeling works is this card is every creature type, and he's every creature type in all zones. Morophon is, he's a mutant ninja turtle. Uh, he is... <laughs> A squirrel? Yep, wow. he's, a, he's a squirrel. He is a brush wag. Is, is mutant a creature type in magic? Yeah. Mut so mutant, we could have a mutant ninja turtle. Yeah, he, I, he is a mutant real? ninja turtle. Yeah. What? Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. Amazing. <gasps> there, Does there. somebody please make that deck? More of all the mutant It's actually ninja possible turtle. there's mutants in this set outside of the changelings. I mean, I don't think there are. I No, there's ninjas. No, there's yeah, no there's mutants. No, there's no mutants. Sad. Darn. Yeah. Well. We'll, right. we'll make it. Yeah. There's a trilobite in this set. Morphon, Morphon's also a trilobite. Cool. Uh, but so um, as Morphon the Bountless enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Squirrel. Spe yep. Spells of the chosen type you cast cost white, blue, black, red, green, less to cast. Wooberg. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. Uh, so we talked about this with snow a second ago. When something refers to symbols, it's pretty specific about referring to those symbols. Uh, Morphon will knock off colored mana symbols. He reduces the cost by that by that amount, and he applies to each. Uh, he applies to all the colored mana symbols that you're actually paying for a card. So, if a card cost red green to cast, for instance, yep. it would cost nothing. Uh, yep, exactly that. If it's of the chosen type, uh, he also says that the creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one. Nice. So he he hands out a bonus to his friends. Um, one thing that may come up, as in it will come up to you at some point, uh, hybrid mana. Hybrid oh, mana. Yeah. Hybrid mana is fascinating. You choose, at the same time as you're choosing modes, which mana you'll be paying for that hybrid, technically. Oh. So if you have something that's hybrid red-blue, hybrid red-blue, uh, you can choose red and blue to be what you're paying. Then Morophon will reduce it by a red and a blue. Frostburn weird. Yes. Nice. He, he will knock both symbols off of Frostburn weird. How'd if you he like that? Weird. Rip blast yep. in the past. I just pulled out. <laughs> Whew. So, yep. Uh, Morophon does some strange things, but the, the big deal is he behaves the same as the ones that reduce just number. Anything that reduces just a number reduces the, the generic mana component of spells only. So it doesn't reduce the colored bits. Uh, this does not reduce the generic bits. Yes, this does not reduce the generic bits. Um, so that knocks off any increases that have happened and the base cost. Uh, increases look like kicker. Dismantling blows in this set. Uh, white and two to cast. It's oh, an instant. Gosh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, so dismantling blow is kicker uh, two and a blue. Uh, you may pay an additional two and a blue as you cast the spell. Uh, destroy target artifact or enchant. Dismantling blow is straight disenchant for three mana. If this spell was kicked, draw two cards. Nice. D yep. Just yeah. Destroy a thing, get a free divination. Uh, the the If dismantling blow was a creature spell with kicker. I wish there was one in the set, but there isn't. Uh, so Gnarled pack. Yeah. Gnarly pack. Uh, that's a bad example because it doesn't have multiple colors. I want oh, okay. I want a kicker with multiple colors. Okay. These exist, but they all look weird enough that I didn't want to make people think they were in the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because they, they could have been reprinted into this set. Uh, if Dismantling Blow was a creature that Morophon uh, was able to reduce, it would reduce the white and it would reduce the blue from that additional Oh cost. my gosh, wow. that's so wild. Yep. Sick. Oh, cool. And so, um, it, because you, you add the increased cost from the kicker. Cool. Um, the third bit, the mana cost of a spell. That's what sits up in the upper right. Um, and that's the default thing that you spend to cast it. So Collected Conjuring here costs red, blue, and two. 
Uh, so you pay four mana for this. Uh, dismantling Blow costs white and two. That's the, that's the base cost of the spell. Uh, converted Mana Cost takes that and converts it to a single number, and it includes X if you paid some mana for X. Uh, collected Conjuring here talks about Mana Cost in its text box. It says, exile the top six cards of your library. You may cast up to two sorcery cards with converted Mana Cost three or less from among them without paying their Mana Costs. Put the exiled cards not cast this way in the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, so Collected Conjuring takes that mana cost up there, and it says, that exists, but you don't have to pay it. I'm going to let you pay nothing instead. <laughs> Seems like a good deal. It's pretty good, yep. Um, if you Collected Conjuring uh, into a sorcery with Kicker, uh, there aren't any sorceries with Kicker in the set, which was also frustrating, uh, <laughs> but um, if you Collected Conjuring into sorcery with Kicker, it, t it takes the mana cost and throws it away, then you have the cost increase from Kicker that you could pay. So you can pay that cost okay. increase or on top of it. Okay. Um, and then get that reduced by something else as well. Not bad. Um, yeah. Um, if two things try to let you pay something for instead of the mana cost. So like Collective Conjuring says pay nothing at all. Uh, well, that that's that's something that you're paying is nothing. Um, or if... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's deep. Wow. Yeah, it's... Deep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the something oh, that you're yes, paying is, is nothing. nothing. Correct. That's wow. how I approach um, my budget. If, if, if two things give you the option to pay something instead of the mana cost, you can only pick one of them. Um, <laughs> so it. Yep, Citadel of Bolus um, lets you pay life instead of paying, or forces you to pay life instead of playing them. Paying yeah. mana for the top card of your library. Well, uh, Bolus doesn't ask you to do anything. No. Yeah, uh, he, he, does, he doesn't give you choices. But Citadel of Bolus says uh, a, a, you may play the top card of your library if you do pay life instead of paying its mana. Yeah. Uh, instead of paying its mana cost, if something has an alternative cost printed on the card, like it's one of the um, one of the forces from this set. Force of. It doesn't matter. Promise. Which one. No, no, yeah. no. I'm the. Thi I'm thinking of those other cards. Virtue. Yes. Virtue. Not frost. Force of virtue. Force. Yeah, force of, of virtue. Uh, so force of virtue. White, white, two enchantment. If it's not your turn, you may exile a white card from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Uh, you can't both pay the. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't p do both things, right? You have to choose which one alternative cost you're paying for this. Okay. Uh, so you uh, you could choose to pay life for it. Bolus says that you have to pay life for it if you play it off the top. So you're locked in. You can't force a virtue off the top of your library by pitching a white card <laughs> with Bolus is Citadel up. Wow. Um, Bolus is Citadel is also a weird card. Yes. So um, anytime that something says in, rather than paying the mana cost and that thing has an X in its cost, it sets the X at zero unless that alternative cost had an X in it. Uh, there's uh, Conflagurate in Modern, has an alternative cost that involves an X, so it sets the X for the spell. Uh, but this is this is infrequent. Most of the time the X just gets set to zero and you get nothing. So. Uh, Been there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now let's talk about no mana costs. <laughs> uh, so things with no mana cost whatsoever can't be cast. Lands. Like lands. Yep, lands don't have a mana cost. You can't cast them. Mox Tantalite also has no mana cost, and you can't cast it normally. So like Ancestral Visions. Ancestral Visions, yes. Uh, the cycle of, of costless suspend spells. Yeah. Yep, Mox Tantalite is a new one, and they printed a fair green card, uh, which means nobody will play it. Uh, <laughs> but they Mox Tantalite's an artifact. Um, it has suspend three for zero mana. Uh, rather than pay, cast this card from your hand, pay zero mana and exile it with three time counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter. When the last is removed, cast it without paying its mana cost. So that's an alternative cost. You're allowed to pay that cost. Uh, you aren't allowed to pay the blank that exists on Mox Tantalite. If you're a math geek, that's an empty set. Blank. You can't, you, you can't pay empty sets. <laughs> um, and Mox Tantalite taps for a mana of any color, which is incredible. This card is really powerful. By Ryan Pancoast, the artist, whose the, sister is a jeweler and made a necklace with yeah. this on it as well, which is really cool. Are you part of the MTG art um, it group where this is auctioned? I was, but then I left it because it was just too sad because I could never buy this too expensive. <laughs> that, that's fair. Um, <laughs> it, the opening bid was $15,000. Oh, my God. Cool. <laughs> Well, it's note, a note, that it's a, note that it's an oil painting that's 24 inches yeah, wide. Yeah, it's huge. Like, yeah. it's, uh, so, like, and it is 
gorgeous from the, it, like uh, it is a wonderful wonderful piece and if it turns out to be busted like an or a beloved yeah. card you're gonna yeah. yeah do well on that yeah it, it's 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 in that magic overlap group of you could put this on the wall above a random bed in a hotel and nobody thinks <laughs> twice about it, yeah, right? Yeah. We're, we're a lot of cards. If you if you put pulling teeth above the bed in a hotel, oh no, oh, boy. no, oh, no, 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 I'm not staying there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that one's horrible. Well, yep, yep. okay. Yep. Um, so, but Mox Tantalite has an alternative cost. All suspend is an alternative cost, um, and suspend's also super weird. Uh, suspend is one of the most complicated mechanics they've ever based a whole set around. <laughs> um, but uh, what it does is it puts this spell on layaway and then casts it later. Um, you have to be able to cast the base spell, so you can't suspend a Mox Tantalite in your opponent's end step. Um, you have to, it's a, it has to be a time when you can normally suspend the spell. Now, with Teferi Time Raveler, you could suspend sorceries on your opponent's end step. Oh! <laughs> you probably don't want to, but you could. Um, so, yeah. And now let's talk about how you figure out or how you actually pay for costs. Now that you figured out how much things cost, taking the base cost, maybe replaced it, maybe not, added some increasers, taking some stuff off of the reducers, then you're gonna pay for it, which is usually with lands, but isn't always. Uh, so Hogak, Arisen Necropolis. This was one of my votes for grossest card, by the way, Megan. Oh, yep. Yep. Uh, it, uh, he's made out of living uh, worm soil. Oh. Yuck. Yep. Uh, uh-huh. So we are going to name Cutest and Grossest card, by the Ooh. way, because there's oh. a yes. definite Cutest card in this set. Oh, That's fair. Okay. Uh, so uh, Hogak here costs hybrid black green, hybrid black green, and five. He's a legendary creature avatar. He's an 8-8 eight, eight for seven, which is pretty fair. He says, you can't spend mana to cast this spell. Wow. But what? Yep. Normally, you would tap lands and spend mana to cast this spell. Um, but he has the two things that lets you do otherwise, Convoke and Delve. <laughs> Um, okay. He also says you can cast Hogak or Necropolis from your graveyard, and he has Trample. Uh, but so with Convoke and Delve, uh, Convoke lets you convoke. Yeah, instead of paying them, <laughs> instead of paying, <laughs> thanks. Instead of paying mana for a four thing, with Convoke you can tap a creature. I can't uh, do it. <laughs> this is like when Megan says vehicle. Vehicle. That's how it's said. <laughs> Anyways, are Continue, you sorry? Are you British? <laughs> no, but it, like it has an H in it. Do you say herbs? Some herbs and spices? As a kid, I did because I didn't know better. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> English doesn't make any sense. No, no it really does not. Um, anyway. So, um, but with, uh, with Hogak here, um, Convoke lets you tap creatures rather than pay mana. And Delve lets you exile cards from your graveyard rather than pay mana. Can I do both of these things? You can do both of these things. He has Great. both of these things. Uh, Delve only lets you pay for generic mana costs, though. So you have to convoke him with uh, a, a, yeah, with colored creatures yeah. because convoke lets you pay for colored costs. So there's um, no way to only use delve with him. If you have named Avatar with Morophon oh. the Boundless, <laughs> Morophon will reduce him. You're right. You're right. All yeah, right. Yeah, it's great. possible. Um, That's what I'm asking. No, Perfect. I would have said it. You could, but it's hard in the past. But uh, you you can actually just yeah, do it with happen. another yeah. rare in the set, right. with with the card in the set. Um, so the, you lock in the cost, you figure out your total cost, uh, then you pay for it, usually using lands and sometimes using these other two resources, Convoke yep. and Delve. Um, I mentioned Trinisphere. Um, Trinisphere says if you would pay less than three for a spell, pay three for it instead. Uh, so you must spend at least three mana in order to, in order to pay spells, or pay for spells. Um, and Convoke and Delve, because they are paying for mana, let you avoid Trinisphere. Huh. So, so you can convoke um, a court of calling with only creatures with a Trinisphere on the battlefield. Okay. Uh, All it, right. It, sure. it, it, it comes I up in Modern you. every once Let's in a while, say, actually. Yeah. I, um, I play Trinisphere in Modern, and so I have to explain this to my opponents sometimes. They're like, no, 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 <laughs> I get to pull this Ancestral Visions off Suspend. I'm like, y you do, but you have to pay three for it. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, why? And I'm like, because Trinisphere tells you to. <laughs> they're like, but... You're I, trying to spend nothing for that. Yeah. They're like, but I don't have to pay the mana cost. I'm and like, that's like, fine. Yeah, but you, do, you don't have to pay the mana cost. And then Trinisphere says, did you pay less than three? Well, pay go back. Three. And, yeah, go back and try again and pay, pay three, three this time. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> cool. Um, so uh, I, I talked a little bit about triggered abilities. You go back yes. there and you, you pay, pay three. three. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I talked a little bit about triggered abilities versus activated abilities and uh, spells. Um, so activated abilities and spells you pay up front. Yeah. Uh, triggered abilities have a condition. 
they, they, if some condition gets hit, the trigger happens and it goes in the stack. You don't have to pay for that to happen. It just, it just goes in the stack and happens. Um, some triggers make you pay stuff during that trigger. Uh, Genesis in this set is, uh, it costs green and four, is an incarnation, is a four, four. Weird. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Genesis is in your graveyard, you may pay green and two. If you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so I mentioned targeting happens first. You pick a target and it goes in the stack. If your opponent exiles it, eh, you don't have to pay anything. You don't pay and you don't make the choice to pay until Genesis' trigger resolves. Oh. Uh, it, this is a little bit, it, they, they fix this because it seems really weird. You should pay and then get an effect. Yeah. Um, uh, they fix this with what are called reflexive triggers. If uh, you do. Yeah, the Cabal Therapist says when you, when you sacrifice a creature, do this other trigger. So it's a trigger that makes a trigger. Uh, but because they're reprinting old cards that existed before they figured this out, they get Genesis in the same set as Cabal Therapist. <laughs> um, so the triggers in general go on the stack. They can be responded to. Uh, reflexive triggers you can respond to twice because there's two different triggers. So Cabal Therapist goes in the stack. You sacrifice a creature. Then it goes in the stack again, targeting your opponent this time. And then they can give themselves hexproof and blow you out. <laughs> okay. Um, Getting fancy. Yeah. Activated abilities have a colon on them. Uh, Cave of Temptation is three activated They're abilities. They're the most like a human of any ability. They've got a colon. No other yep. organs. Just that. Yep. Gross. But they're, they're on their way. Weird. Yep. They, they're they just rolling in poop. <laughs> they got, that's the only thing they do. There you go. Yep. <laughs> that's how I remember everybody. There you go. Yep. You're welcome. Um, and as I've mentioned before, if, if you speak an emoji, they're the eye part of an emoji. That's what a colon is. Uh, but uh, so, yeah. Uh, Cave of Notation taps to add one colorless, uh, one in tap to add one man of any color, and four tap sacrifice Cave of Temptation, uh, colon, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature, so you pick a target. Um, activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So most activated abilities you can activate any time that you have priority to do stuff, to cast spells. Uh, Cave of Temptation has a limitation on when you can activate it. There's like four cards in the set that have limitations on when you can activate them. Uh, so just look at them. If it, it's usually the last part of an activated ability. It turns out you couldn't activate this. You thought it was very exciting to put counters on in combat. <laughs> but you can't. Yeah, Cave of Damnation is like, you have to do this. I'm not that exciting. Yeah, very slowly. Um, so they can be responded to, and they they can have all sorts of weird things. Like we talked about the the farm, the harvest face. Man, what? The, skele- the scarecrow. Oh, the scarecrow. Yeah, the, the scare- harvest face man. Is that what you just called yes. the scarecrow? Yeah. <laughs> I, I Megan, can't be I want to you remember. to describe scarecrow now with no like words that are scarecrow. Okay. Or scare or crow. Okay. So Rob is is harvest face man, which I think is horrifying. Harv- wow. Yeah. <laughs> I would just say like, um, like a, a field man made of straw. <laughs> yep. Spooky corn boy. That's what I would say. Spooky corn boy. Spooky corn boy. Spooky corn boy. There you go, Magic. That's yep. a free card name yep. for you. There you go. I'm not even going to charge you. Spooky corn boy. <laughs> I'm wearing a spooky corn boy for Halloween. And cannot, you can't stop me. Cannot wait until that's a card. <laughs> This is your next T-shirt idea, right? I'm writing yeah. it down. Spooky writing it down, spooky corn, corn boy. boy. My favorite, my favorite creature type is spooky corn boy. <laughs> what do I name with Morophon if I'm spooky corn boy? Well, I suppose it'd still just be a scarecrow. Yeah, yeah. But it, it could also be boy. <laughs> <laughs> creature type, boy. Boy. Yep. <laughs> so activated abilities uh, behave the same as spells. You pay a cost, they go in the stack. You get an effect as it resolves. You pick targets at the time it goes in the stack. They're like mini spells or pseudo spells they're, they're, the, the section of the rules is actually casting spells and activating activated abilities they're exactly the same uh, some activated abilities are weird you activate them from hidden zones and or at weird times and you would think that this is something that only comes up rarely there are six cards in the set that you can activate from your hand alright All right. so ninjutsu it's mm-hmm. back it's very exciting um, so Fallen Shinobi is, uh, is black, blue, three for a creature zombie ninja. It's a five, four. Uh, it has ninjutsu of black, blue, and two. And it has a bunch of text to explain it. Black, blue, two, comma, return an unblocked attacker you control to hand, colon. This is an activated ability. It goes in the stack. The cost is returning that creature to your hand. Uh, while it's on the stack, they're both in your hand. If your opponent can make you discard cards in instant speed, they can get your ninja out of your hand. Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, 
and then stop you from putting it onto the battlefield. Um, you put this in the the effect is you put this card onto the battlefield from your hand tapped and attacking. You reveal the ninja actually as part of activated ninjutsu. It's not part of the cost, it's just part of the thing that ninjutsu does as you as you go to um, go to ninjutsu. You basically swap the ninja out for a creature. Surprise! I was a zombie ninja all along. I love it. The flavor is so yes. perfect. The entire time. A surprise. I also like how you're kind of Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I was a zombie ninja. <laughs> uh, I mean, Italians make the best ninjas. Why do you say that? Well, Raphael, Leonardo, okay. Donatello, oh, okay. Michelangelo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we already covered this, this, this episode. A little bit. Relevant to what we talked about today. Wow, yes. amazing. So, uh, I can't believe uh, I walked into that. Uh, the, so Fall Shinobi, like many ninjas, not all the ninjas in the set, but most of them, uh, has a when it deals damage to an opponent trigger. Whenever Fallen Shinobi deals combat damage to a player, that player excels the top two cards of their library. Until end of turn, you may play those cards without paying their mana costs. It lets you play them. So if they're lands, you can play them as lands. It doesn't set up a special window that you use it or lose it in. So you play them at the normal times. Uh, you play sorceries and creatures on your main phase. You play instance anytime you have priority for the remainder of the turn. Uh, so, and if there's two lands, well, you get one of them. Bummer unless you already you. played a land. But also, you seem to be doing yeah, fine. You're yeah, doing you're great. Uh, <laughs> you hit them with the Fallen Shinobi, and it's pretty good. The next card uh, you're going to talk yeah. about is one of my favorite yeah. things. Yeah, I want to talk about replacement effects in relation to this card. So replacement effects are unlike the other things. Uh, you can respond to triggered abilities, activated abilities, and spells. Replacement effects don't work like that. Instead of going on the stack and giving you the chance to respond, they change something as it's happening in the middle of it happening. They take it away and they replace it with something else. Uh, they'll kind say, of like ninjutsu. <laughs> kind of like ninjutsu, <laughs> yes. So Treefolk Umbra here is green and two for an enchantment aura. It is enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus O plus two and it assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Uh, that's not actually what we care about. It is totem armor. Mm -hmm. It says if enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all the damage from it and destroy this aura. So it takes this thing that's happening and replaces it with some other thing happening. And it could be anything. In this case, it's, you know, getting targeted by a removal spell with removing some damage and throwing this away. <laughs> uh, the replacement effects uh, have to exist before the thing that they're replacing. Um, you can generally respond to the thing that they will be replacing. So you could respond to that removal spell by countering your own removal spell so the tree full cumber doesn't get to save the creature. Uh, it, this is an option. <laughs> um, and they, they can apply at any time at random times in the middle of other things and as a result of other replacement effects. They, the, the words to recognize them, when you look at triggers, you see when, whenever, or at. Anything with those is a triggered ability. Uh, replacement wow, this effects, really is like learning a new language. It really is. Replacement is effects say instead, or they say as, or they say this it's something enters the battlefield with, are all replacing something with doing something else. Sometimes it's really similar. Uh, this enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, uh, actually replaces entering normally with entering with a plus one plus one counter. Uh, they, there's a couple other narrow corner cases. Pre preventing damage is actually a replacement effect and stuff. There's not a lot of those that go on. Uh, even in this set, there's not a lot of those. Um, there's some really weird ones, like Sarah has a replacement effect on her ultimate uh, that replaces losing life with not losing life. For a second, I <laughs> heard that as S A R A H. Like just oh. Sarah, Sarah over there. Yeah, yeah it, 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 ultimate Sarah. Like ultimate Sarah. <laughs> ultimate that's, Sarah. That's definitely a language thing in magic. Like our word for Sarah is not the normal <laughs> no. word for Sarah. It's true. All right. Um, if someone names their child Sarah spelled the magic way, that's that's a child that is going to be you're spelling their to name never to everyone. Know them yeah, they, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I was going to say you're free to not know. Them. <laughs> you're, you're free to unfriend those people. No, 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 no. The problem is that they're... they're it's never going to be spelled right. Yeah, they're, 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 in their they're like those people life. that add like arbitrary Qs or Ks to names that don't belong yeah. in there. They, 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 yes, you spell my name S-E-R-R-A. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that with an H in my name a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have a Q at the front of Maria, and I'm like... Yep, silent Qs. Silent Q, Q Maria. You know what I mean? Nobody Qu ever says uh, that. Qu Qu Maria. Maria. <laughs> it's impossible to say also. <laughs> So, um, 
that's the the different types of abilities that you'll generally see. Static abilities are things that just like the tree folk umbra. It said it gives plus oh plus two. It's just a thing that applies all the time while it's out. Um, I want to move on from abilities and talk about type line. Uh, so the type line on cards, uh, it'll have three different things on it. It'll have super types, which are like regular <laughs> types, but don't do anything. <laughs> um, you have types, which tell you how to play things, and you have subtypes, which basically are submarine. No, yeah, they, submarine noise. They, well, they're 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 under types is the way to think about it. If a type gets removed, it'll remove associated subtypes. Don't leave home gotcha. without your under types on. Yep. So the super types that you will run into if you play magic that isn't legacy are legendary and snow, uh, which are both in the set, like Merit Lage's Slumber. Uh, it's blue and one for a legendary snow enchantment. Uh, whenever Merit Lage's Slumber or another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more snow permanents, so permanents with a snow super type, sacrifice Merit Lage to slumber. If you sacrifice it, create Merit Lage, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. Goals. Hashtag goals. Yep. Oh, yeah. She's back. So I can sacrifice my snow lands and th that will count towards this? Well, you count your snow lands. You sacrifice only this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you count snow lands. They, if you, okay, yep, got it. If you, if you have 10 snow permanents, including this. Uh, Great. You you get to wake up Merit Lage and get a 2020 flying in the storm. Merit Lage, wake up. I'm so excited. Yes. Uh, so super types, because they're not types, things that change types don't impact them. Uh, so uh, Sarkin the Masterless from War of the Spark, he turns all your planeswalkers into or all your planeswalkers into dragon creatures. Yeah. Well, he gets rid of planeswalker, but he doesn't affect legendary because it's a super type. Um, same thing if you uh, turn a snow land into a creature, but it stops being a land. It'll still be snow. <laughs> uh, so the we, there's actually a card that references this. It's the first card to say the word super type on it in magic, as far as I know. Uh, Reprobation is white and one for an enchantment aura. Aura is a subtype of enchantment. Uh, it has enchant creature. And it says enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a coward creature <laughs> with base power and toughness zero one. And then in reminder text, it says it keeps all super types, but loses all other types and creature types. Uh, so reprobation leaves snow, it leaves legendary, it knocks off dragon, it knocks Bizarre. off artifact. Uh, if you put reprobation on an artifact creature, it stops being an artifact. <laughs> oh. um, because it says it is this. It takes the types and replaces them. Why does it do this? Like we've, you know, like think about other cards, like what is it, Cura's transmutation? Kazmina's transmutation? Kazmina's transmutation doesn't say this weird line of text at the bottom. Uh, well, because most of the time it doesn't matter um, it, this in this set, it's actually relevant to remind you that it's still snow. Okay. Uh, because you have like Chiller Pillar, which is a snow permanent, and it, like Great name. It, like yeah, yeah, or, or like counting towards Merit Lage, right? Um, it's relevant that you didn't remove snow okay. from the okay. from the thing. Well, that makes sense. Um, and so there, there's the two super types you'll see: legendary and snow. There's the there's the types. Um, there's a mnemonic for the types. Um, special T. Um, oh, yeah, I've heard this yes. before. Sorcery, Planeswalker, Enchantment, Instant, um, Artifact, Land, and Tribal. And Mr. T. And, yep. <laughs> Mr. T. Uh, poor Tribal. Uh, tribal is a card type. It's the only card type that doesn't tell you how to play the card. Uh, I don't believe there's any Tribal cards in this set. I don't think so. But if we go back to, well, I don't know. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. Uh, the last Tribal card printed would have been... Uh, they printed some tribal Eldrazi cards in um, Rise of the Eldrazi. So those are the last tribal cards that, it, that they printed. I remember a tribal sorcery or something from Modern Masters, so it was a future site card. Yeah, they, they reprinted that. Uh, it, it, like, Modern Masters will reprint them. It'll reprint things like Tarfire or yeah. whatever. Uh, but the they won't. Pr they tend not to print new tribals. Uh, tribal is a hack. Uh, basically, subtypes connect to types. Like I said, they're a, sub, a subset of types. Um, so... Creatures can have creature types. Lands can have land types. If it stops being a land, it won't be a forest anymore. Because, because it doesn't even know what a forest is. Right, exactly. Uh, well, it knows what a forest is, but it doesn't know how they work. <laughs> <laughs> how does this work? <laughs> yep. Um, but uh, they wanted to be able to put creature types on things that weren't creatures. And so they added tribal, which is a card type. And it also has the creature types. It was a band-aid. Yeah. And it works really well at its job for making the rules work consistently. Um, because then then you can always just say, well, types match to subtypes. When you change the types, the associated subtypes fall off. Um, a lot of people say tribal should be a super type, which if you understand the type system really well, you're just like, 
That'd be crazy. If you moved it up to being a super type, then you'd have super types associated with type, with subtypes. What, what's the difference between it and a type then? Uh, like, <laughs> wow. And so oh, uh, and there's philosophical discussions. My ears. Right. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's super rules geeky stuff. Uh, but uh, basically, if you if you knock off a, a card type, you it loses the associated subtypes. Okay. Um, and anything that is a subtype is to the right of the dash on a type line. Um, anything to the left of the dash is a is a type or a super type. Um, and you you really don't run into the other super types, so it doesn't matter. Uh, they could have printed one in this set, but I don't think they wanted world enchantments to exist in modern. <laughs> Fair. Yep. Um, so I it, that's my general stuff. If you like, if you understand how casting spells work, if you understand how activating abilities work, if you understand the type line, you understand a lot of the the bones of what make this set up. Um, in this set, there are, they have reminder text all over the place. If you look at a card, like um, there's that one that has retrace and cascade, it is mostly reminder text. The card is like 90% words, and it's all reminder text. Uh, these The reminder text is very helpful in this set. It generally tells you exactly what the card does. Um, read it. If a card has hideaway, that means it enters the battlefield tapped, and it tells you that in hideaway. Um, you will miss that your random 2-1 enters the battlefield tapped if you don't read all of the reminder text. Uh, normally, you can you feel like you can ignore it. In this set, you can't. Um, there's two mechanics that don't have reminder text on all the cards. Um, retrace on Renin 6 does not have reminder text. There's no room for it. Uh, retrace, if you open a Renin 6 and no cards with retrace in your pool, um, you probably play Renin 6. Renin 6 is amazing. Uh, Renin 6 gives instant sorcery spells in your graveyard retrace. To, to use retrace, you discard a land, you pay the cost of the spell, and you cast it from your graveyard. Unlike flashback, you don't exile it afterwards. It goes back to your graveyard after Sick. you're done with it. Yeah. That's so disgusting about retrace. Yes. I remember the first time that it happened, and I was just like, what? You just get to, you just keep get to do this again? Forever? Yeah. I Raven's Crime your whole hand. This happens again? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely looked at Renin 6 and been like, all right, I want to build a deck with Renin 6 in it, and... Lightning Bolt. Do I need other retrace spells? Probably not. <laughs> like, I, I retrace re Lightning Bolt every... Seems good enough. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's uh, fine. I'll, I'll play that card. Um, so, uh, but retrace does require you to discard a land card specifically in order to retrace the spell. Um, protection shows up on the two swords. Uh, protection... And it shows up yeah. on that little snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker is protection from instance. It's true. So Cute. three mythics. And protection from everything once you've leveled it up all the way. Yeah, level eight. You can never touch me. Protection from everything. It's I'm beautiful. a big snake. You had to pay green and eight. Like, I, I'm actually really angry at Hex Drinker because it took my green mythic slot uh, <laughs> to be like, I was like, I want a respectable green mythic creature. They're like, you get a Hex Drinker. And I'm like, I'm a snake. I'm like, you're, if I'm paying four for you, why wouldn't I just pay for Thrun? Wow. Like, brutal, I, I, brutal I, Rob. I, have, I love. A I have, opi I have opinions on Hex Drinker. I, I don't like him being a mythic. Uh, wow. But um, so, but protection on Hex Drinker and the swords uh, does four different things. It prevents damage, which is a replacement effect. Uh, it, s it stops enchantment and equipment from being attached to that thing if it matches the protection quality. It stops things with that quality from blocking it, and it stops things with that quality from targeting it. Um, untargeted things can still impact it. Uh, untargeted things that deal damage, that damage will get prevented. Uh, but like Kaya's Guile can still force you to sacrifice a creature that has protection from instance, for instance, even though it's an instant. Yeah. Uh, because it doesn't target. Uh, and so those don't have the reminder text for protection. And they've basically stopped putting protection in normal sets. So you may, yeah. have, if you've started playing in the last year, you probably have never seen a card with protection. Yeah. I, unless you've like played modern and randomly run into a sword or played some EDH. But if you played only standard limited, it just, just hasn't come up. Yeah, because it was confusing. Yes. Um, they replaced it with basically just giving things randomly indestructible or hexproof. Hey, everybody. Big thanks to Ultimate.
Ultra Pro for being one of the sponsors of our Ultra Show. That's right. You can get so much sick stuff. You can get awesome dice. You can get awesome binders. You can get play mats with beautiful art. Yeah, if you like the new Japanese planeswalkers, I've got some news for you. You can get them on plane, play mats, sleeves, Walker. whatever art. you want from Ultra Pro. Oh, That's my excited oh, Muppet oh, arms. Oh. <laughs> or just my excited Maria arms. Either way, Ultra Pro is amazing. They've got all the great stuff you need to make Magic the Gathering. Uh, your ultimate hobby and uh, you can find their stuff at card kingdom too. cardkingdom.com slash glhf well thank you so much judge rob for being with yes. us you are welcome and letting us get a look here into modern horizons and are we level one judges now just checking uh no 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 you uh, you do you want to come and work a tournament we've got a mythic championship qualifier coming up oh okay oh. yeah great I'll um so, yeah we, we, cer we certify <laughs> people for actually doing tournament work and then we have them take a rules test Okay, oh, well, wow. yep. got to take a test. All right, then I'm out. Uh, yep. but, <laughs> but this has been super helpful, just like generally yes. for people yeah. who want to learn Wonderful. how to do magic yeah. stuff. And uh, will you be in our comment section of our video? Yes, I will. I'll be in the comment section. Um, I will spin up Discord this weekend. Um, and Oh, no, not this weekend. I'm camping this weekend. That's fine. So That's I, fine. But, I, but I'll, be checking, I'll be checking my phone to for YouTube comments oh, because okay. I can respond yeah, to YouTube but... comments. Okay, great. Uh, that's that's really reasonable. So but... after this video goes up on Thursday, head to YouTube if you have any questions for Rob. Yeah. But in the goodness of his heart, he'll be there answering your questions. Um, but yeah, have a lot of fun at your pre-releases, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Tweet at GLHF Magic with your sweet polls. Big thank you again to cardkingdom.com slash GLHF for helping to sponsor us. Patreon.com slash GLHF if this kind of stuff is valuable to you. And of course, Ultra Pro. Yes. But uh, yeah, once again, thanks, Rob. You're and welcome. Uh, see you out there in the magical world, everybody. Come on.